From TV8, where news is number one, John McLaughlin and Liz Merdian. This is the TV8 Morning News. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. It is Friday, the 11th of January. This morning's top stories, driving is still slick after light snow overnight is still falling this morning. John will have the complete forecast and travel conditions. The United Nations Secretary General prepares to meet with Iraq with a plan to ease tensions in the Gulf. Iowa may soon have another lottery game that ticket buyers could play every day. And TV8 film critic John Pascuzzi reviews the movie Awakenings. Also coming up later, opportunities to volunteer at the YMCA. Still a little slick this morning. No, especially if you're living in the north or west part of central Iowa. Some moderate snow still up there. In the Des Moines area, though, just light snow right now. Our temperature is 25 degrees downtown, 26 at the airport. We do have the light snow continuing. North wind at 5, 92% relative humidity, and the barometer at 3001. On National Weather Service radar, there is a band of a little bit heavier snow now just to the west of the Ames area going down through Boone toward the Perry vicinity. And uh, about three to four inches of snow has fallen up around Boone from last night into this morning with some moderate snow continuing to fall. And they could see another one or two inches before it's all over. But in Des Moines, only around one inch of total accumulation so far. On the satellite picture this morning, the heaviest clouds are over the southeast part of the state. Temperatures there are near the 30-degree point, and they're getting some freezing drizzle, so some very slick traveling in that part of the state. Light snow being reported across most other locations. For Carroll, today still a chance of some light snow during the morning hours, 24 degrees. Creston today, a weather advisory, at least for the morning hours, 25 degrees. Sheraton, weather advisory for the entire day, 25 degrees. For Dodge, a weather advisory for the morning, 22 today. Grinnell, 26 degrees. Iowa Falls, a high of 21, and Ottumwa, their temperatures will remain quite steady today in the upper 20s. For Des Moines and Central Iowa, weather advisory for this morning, we'll see snow and maybe a little bit of freezing drizzle, one to two inches of uh, additional accumulation possible. Again, only about one inch on the ground right now, and a high temperature of 24 to 26 degrees. The weekend forecast is looking a little bit better. So think people should be a little bit careful this morning then. Yes, the roads are still slick out there, especially from the snow we had last night and uh, also the snow that's continuing to fall. Roads are slick and uh, driving a bit on the treacherous side, especially out in the rural areas uh, in town now. Roads are mainly turning uh, wet because of the chemicals that have been applied to the surface. And again, the central third of Iowa under a winter uh, weather advisory today, while the east will be under a weather advisory for the entire day. All right, thanks a lot, John. The New York Times says, actually, why don't we read this story first. The United Nations Secretary General is in Paris this morning as he tries to thaw icy relations between Iraq and the United States. Martha Teicher has more on Perez de Cuellar's mission. He arrived saying he was hopeful he might be able to stop what he called the unfortunate trend toward hostilities, but said he carried no concrete proposals, that he was acting only as a spokesman for the international community. But there are indications that when he reaches Baghdad Saturday, he will at least discuss a plan offered by the Scandinavian countries. It would reportedly involve a UN peacekeeping force monitoring the simultaneous withdrawal of Iraqi forces from Kuwait and American forces from Saudi Arabia. The monitoring group would not include U.S. soldiers or any of its Arab allies. De Cuellar's talks in Paris apparently touched on proposals to resolve the crisis with a Middle East peace conference favored by France. Meanwhile, Secretary of State James Baker, meeting Saudi Arabia's King Fahd this morning, expressed satisfaction with Saudi financial commitments to U.S. military operations in the Gulf. The Saudis say they will pay up to half the $6 billion a month bill. Baker, however, was skeptical of Arab diplomatic reports that Saddam Hussein will offer his own proposal for withdrawal from Kuwait on January 16th, after the UN deadline, in order to show he is not cowed by the West. That's you. Strictly, strictly hypothetical. And therefore, I don't think it uh, is something that should be responded to. The deadline is real, and the deadline runs out at midnight on the 15th. The New York Times is also reporting that Saddam himself will propose a solution to the crisis after the deadline. The newspaper quotes Arab diplomats that are hinting Saddam plans to wait a day or two after the deadline, expressing his support in principle for the pulling out of Kuwait. 
Lawmakers on Capitol Hill are getting closer to a vote on whether to give President Bush the authority to wage war. The president's opponents and supporters debated into the late night hours on whether the U.S. should give diplomacy and sanctions more time or allow the president to go to war. Both of Iowa's senators have urged the president to hold off on any military action until sanctions are given more time. Iowans are waiting and worrying as the Tuesday deadline for an Iraqi pullout approaches. Many groups organizing peace vigils this weekend. Dowling High School students are holding a special mass for peace this morning at 9 o'clock. Church congregations in Independence, Webster City and other Iowa communities will also come together for peace throughout the weekend. Tonight, Governor Terry Branstead and officers of the Iowa National Guard plan to distribute Blue Star banners to families with sons and daughters stationed in the Gulf. Another Iowa National Guard unit will join forces in the desert for Operation Desert Shield. The 875th Replacement Detachment from Fort Dodge leaves for the desert today. The Johnston-based 1034th Quartermaster Unit left for the Middle East yesterday. Iowa legislative leaders are predicting Governor Terry Branstad will be forced to call for higher taxes to solve the state's budget problems. Yesterday, the governor proposed $47 million in cuts, including $10 million slashed from Iowa college construction budgets and $5 million from environmental programs. But the governor also proposed $17.5 million in new spending for welfare programs. Iowa legislators say Branstead's plans so far fall short of wiping out the projected deficit. Well, Iowans could be in the money if the state adds a new lottery game. TV8 News has learned of one new lotto game to be announced in the next several days. The game is said to be similar to daily games offered by Minnesota and Illinois. TV8's Todd Magel has more. Hello and welcome to the Minnesota State Lottery's daily free drawing. Two border states, Minnesota and Illinois, already have a daily game, but it's not clear if Iowa's would operate in the same way. These other state games often encourage more people to play because players have a better chance to win smaller jackpots. It's been three years since the Iowa Lottery introduced a brand new game. The Lotto America game was started back in 1987. Lottery spokesperson Brett Voorhees says he can neither confirm nor deny the new daily game. He did say the lottery has in years past researched a daily type game, but determined the timing was not right to introduce it. The game would likely be televised on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, the days when the regular weekly Iowa Lotto program is not shown. More details on the game or when it will start could be available by next week. 22 now before the top of the hour still to come. We'll check the latest on the weather situation. And in sports, a Big Ten battle in Iowa City in just a moment. Right now we have light snow continuing to fall in the Des Moines area. Not much accumulation so far, less than an inch at the airport. 25 is the current temperature, 26 at the airport. And we don't expect temperatures to recover much today because of the cloud cover. North wind now at around 5 miles per hour, 92% humidity, and a rising barometer at 3001. Still some more, uh, heavy, or more moderate precipitation occurring just to the north and west of the Des Moines area from around Ames back through the Boone area toward Ogden and then south. We are seeing a little bit heavier snowfall. As far as total accumulations, Boone today reporting three to four inches of snow. The Webster City area, about two inches of snow. But as you get back into Des Moines, less than an inch. And then down toward the Albia and Ottumwa area, the conditions down there are more freezing drizzle than snow right now with uh, only about a half inch of total accumulation. Temperatures around the state right now are in the 20s with 23 in Mason City and 22 in the Fort Dodge area. Waterloo with 25, 26 in Cedar Rapids. It is a bit warmer across the southeast. That's why they have some of that freezing drizzle with upper 20s. And temperatures are basically going to stay about where they are right now and maybe just warm up another degree or two. At least that's the forecast right now. On the satellite picture, we have the upper level disturbance that is moving its way across the upper Midwest. And as it does, we're going to, as it moves farther to the east, we're going to see things eventually taper off as far as the snow in the western counties of Iowa this morning. And by around midday, the snow should end here in central Iowa. But the eastern third of Iowa should continue to get some snow throughout the day, then taper off to flurries later on tonight. Some weak areas of high pressure will be building in here for tomorrow. That will boost temperatures into uh, the upper 20s to around 30 across much of the state. The skies will probably remain cloudy tomorrow, but at least a little bit drier. The next storm system is poised to come in here by about Monday or Tuesday. A lot of moisture across the south again. This system will turn into a winter storm as it gets closer to the east and produce uh, likely some very heavy snowfalls across the eastern coast. 22 up in the Twin Cities right now, 26 in Kansas City, Chicago checking in with 31 degrees, 16 in Buffalo, 
5 below in Bangor, Maine this morning and 50 down in Brownsville, Texas. Road conditions reported up to 100% snow and ice covered along all the interstates. And uh, the exception is I-29 north from Omaha up to around the Sioux Falls area. They're reporting normal winter driving conditions. And if uh, traveling on I-80 out to the west, visibility at times reduced to about an eighth of a mile because of moderate to heavy snow. Traveling today, the best direction to go will be toward the west where things will be drying out a bit today. Still plenty of snow expected across eastern Iowa on up into Wisconsin, sections of Illinois and northeastern Missouri. For Iowa today, a weather advisory will continue for the central third into around uh, the midday hour or so. And then uh, throughout the entire day across the east, two to three inches of additional accumulation possible in the east. Another inch or two here in central Iowa and across the west. Basically some light snow temperatures today about where they are now in the upper 20s across the south and uh, low to mid 20s across the north. And then later on tonight, cooling down a bit, 7 to 10 across the north, 15 in the south. Still a few snow flurries across the eastern counties, but basically dry for the rest of Iowa tonight. Now let's check the forecast in detail for Des Moines and central Iowa today. A weather advisory in effect this morning. Snow ending by midday with another inch or two possible. Then cloudy skies this afternoon and high about where we are now in the mid-20s. Later on tonight, cloudy skies, low near 15 degrees, and a bit warmer tomorrow with considerable cloudiness and the high of 30. Extended forecast, fair on Sunday, the next chance of snow shaping up for Monday and Tuesday. I don't want any more snow. Well, we didn't get too much. We could have had uh, two to four inches, and uh, so far, about nine-tenths of an inch is all. All right. In sports, 22nd rated Iowa has beaten the Michigan Wolverines in a game that went down to the wire last night. Iowa improved to two and one with a home court win over the 1989 national champs. The final score, 79-78. Iowa keeps its home court record unblemished while Michigan falls to 0-3 in conference play. Iowa faces Minnesota on Saturday. In other Big Ten scores last night, the fourth-ranked Buckeyes ran over Northwestern 102-62. The Buckeyes are now 13-0. It was Michigan State by 15 over the Badgers, and the Illini beat Minnesota by one point, the final 67-66. In Des Moines, Creighton stormed into Vets Auditorium and built a big lead against Drake. The Bulldogs were behind at the outset and never threatened Creighton. The final there, 82-61. Bulldogs now 1-2 and two in Valley play. Creighton is 2-2. Two and two. Drake hosts Bradley Saturday morning. And just one other game in the Missouri Valley it was Wichita State 60, Notre Dame 50. And in the Big A, the Jayhawks beat Maryland Baltimore County 97 to 46. And still to come on the TV8 Morning News, some new casino dealers are learning the trade for Iowa's riverboats. And we'll have this weekend's movie review in a moment. For up-to-the-minute weather information, day or night, call for the TV8 Weather Beacon forecast at 262-7173. Fifteen minutes now before the top of the hour. Some very light snow in the Des Moines area and 26 degrees at the airport. In business news, the stock market has recorded its first gain of 1991 in a year already full of turmoil, both in the world and financial markets. The Dow gained 28 and a half points after six down sessions. Trading was light, closing at 24.98. In about three months, gambling boats will be rolling down the Mississippi River in eastern Iowa. Kerry J. Hahn has more on new casino dealers learning the trade. We're offering classes in blackjack and big six, craps, and roulette. Welcome to school, Northeast Iowa Community College Dealers School at Ice Harbor in Dubuque. Come April 1st, the first American flag vessel to receive a gambling license, the Dubuque Casino Bell, now under construction at Pensacola, Florida, will need 150 dealers. Northeast Iowa Community College offered marketing and registration for the courses, with Casino Bell employees acting as instructors. Now you're done. 43 students are enrolled in the first five-week course that costs between four and $500. Instructor Ken Arthur has had a career in Nevada and Las Vegas gaming and will now be a riverboat pit boss. If you would have asked me two and a half months ago if I'd have been working a riverboat on the Mississippi gambling, I would have looked at you and said you need to go have your batteries checked. The lure of the return of riverboat gambling enticed Ken and his wife to Iowa. Can he spot a good potential dealer? 
immediately. It's dexterity. And that tells us right away if we're going to have a good dealer, a mediocre dealer, or somebody that we're going to have to point in a different direction. Student Leo Sullivan was born in Dubuque, raised in Brooklyn, New York, and hopes to become an Iowa riverboat dealer. Have you done anything like this before? Well, I lost two grand in Atlantic City before. That's about <laughs> it. So you're experienced. <laughs> I'm experienced uh, at losing at this game. I'm trying to figure out how to win it. The Northeast Iowa Community College Dealers School. People here say it's a sure bet. 27 red. I'm Kerry Jahan at Ice Harbor in Dubuque. Thank you, Kerry. Time now to check in with our traffic reporter, Neil Schultz, to find out how slick the roads are this morning. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, John. I feel like I'm in Ice Harbor right now. I think it's a little bit slick out here this morning. I'm out on I-80 now about Merle Hay, and there's uh, several cars that I've seen already that have gone in that have been, just been fresh from this morning. I have one accident already on the interstate, I-35 southbound. This is south of about where the Meredith Bridge is, the Meredith Overpass, so be real careful out and about this morning. 30 to 100 block of 2nd Avenue. In the southbound lane, we've got a stalled car really following things up out there, making only about one lane available. Hopefully, by the time you get in your car, that'll be gone. A lot of extra time where you want to go. We didn't get near the snow we were supposed to. John did a pretty good job of keeping that out of there, but uh, things still very slick underfoot, so be extra careful this morning. This is Neil for the Polk County Sheriff's Office with TV8 and KGGO Traffic. Thank you, Neil. And if you're thinking of taking in a movie this weekend, TV8's film critic John Pascuzzi says the new release, Awakenings, may be a good choice. Here's John. You know, it's already being talked about as an Academy Award nominee for Best Actor, Director, and Movie. It's Awakenings. Robert Williams and Robert De Niro star as doctor and patient, respectively. Now, the time is 1969, the place Bainbridge Hospital in the Bronx, New York. Williams, as Dr. Malcolm Sayer, is a brilliant lab technician who becomes involved with the hospital's so-called living dead, patients in a sleep-like coma, some for more than 30 years. Now, it's here that Sayer is given permission to use an experimental drug on his patients, including Leonard Lowe, played here by Robert De Niro, who is now asking for some rights of his own. You are free to go for a walk. I am? Alone? Uh, what difference would that make? Look, I'm not a criminal. I've committed no crime, I'm not a danger to myself or to others, and yet I'm still not allowed to go for a walk on my own by myself. He didn't wake a thing, he woke a person. I am a person. Now directed by Penny Marshall, yes, Laverne of Laverne and Shirley fame, Awakenings is must-see as a film and for its performances by De Niro and Williams, who are both brilliant. Now, based on a true story, it is a tender, touching, funny, and finally tragic tribute to the forgotten men and women who had one brief moment of life and love. And for the movie Showcase, this is John Pascuzzi reporting. Looks pretty interesting if we don't have to brave the snow to get to the theater. Yeah, not much snow out there right now, at least not in the Des Moines area. More to the north and west of town. 25 downtown right now, 26 at the airport. Very light snow and a north wind. 92% relative humidity. The barometer is rising now at 3001. On the satellite picture, we have low gray clouds over the entire Midwest. Some heavier clouds over the southeast where freezing drizzle is occurring this morning. As far as snowfall amounts, about 9 tenths of an inch so far here in Des Moines. Boone picking up 3 to 4 inches. Webster City around 2 inches. And southeast Iowa only around a half inch, so not as much as was expected. For Albia today, a weather advisory in effect, a high temperature 27 degrees. Greenfield and Jefferson light morning snow. High there today in the mid-20s. Knoxville 26, a weather advisory in effect. Osceola, weather advisory in 25. Tama 25 today in Webster City with a couple inches of new snow on the ground. 22 degrees today. For Des Moines and Central Iowa, that weather advisory will continue until midday. We've still got the possibility of picking up another inch or two of snow Otherwise cloudy this afternoon and a high temperature of 24 to 26. Winds today continuing out of the north at around 10. All right, coming up next, giving time to young people at the YMCA. We'll talk about some programs in a moment. Eight minutes before the hour, some light snow and 26 degrees. This morning, our spotlight on a Helping Hand volunteer shines on the YMCA and programs for young people. Gail Collins, who is a volunteer herself, is also co-chairman of a program called Partners with Youth. Thanks for coming in this morning. Hi, Liz. There are all kinds of things you can do over there. Lots of things. Um, I started out going to the Y 
to play racquetball and didn't realize really what an incredible place the Y was. Um, we have like 13,000 members. We reach 84,000 kids, um, youth, adults, mm -hmm. elderly. Um, what's neat about the Y is no one's ever turned down. If they want to be a member, they want to join any of the groups, they're never turned down. Uh, we have two um, outreach programs. Mm -hmm. One of them is called the Y Connection that works with 15 of the Des Moines schools where kids are bused in and go to the programs and we provide transportation and all the programs for them. Uh, the other is called the Y Coalition. And the Y in that way works with different agencies within the city mm -hmm. uh, providing services, programs, um, activities, uh, lots of different things for all different ages, um, up to 70 year old people. How can people help and volunteer for those programs too? Well, um, they can volunteer by being a member. Um, a lot of the membership money goes towards the support. Um, there are five different areas. Um, there are five different whys. Um, they can also volunteer by just calling and asking or giving up what they do best. Mm -hmm. um, everybody has kind of a unique thing that they can do. Um, coaches and referees, okay. um, tutoring, um, lots of these kids after school, uh, supervising programs for teenagers. Uh, we have uh, what's called a splash dance for teenagers. Um, provide really um, positive gang mm -hmm. experiences for kids and that's a real concern in the city and we're working with Urban Dreams on this um, chemical free dances um, okay. and volunteers are needed to supervise all of these things to, to be at the Y mm -hmm and be a role model for these kids. All right, thanks for coming in. If mm -hmm. you have any questions or if you'd like to think about some of those programs, call the United Way at 1-800-345-5331 or 246-6545. Sounds like rewarding work. Thanks for coming That's in. great, thank you. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. Four minutes before the hour, the temperature 26 degrees. Here are this morning's top stories for Friday, January 11th. Allow extra time to get to work or school. Streets and highways are still slick after some light overnight snow, and it's still falling this morning. UN Secretary General Javier Perez de Cuellar travels to Baghdad tomorrow. He's expected to suggest that the UN will monitor Iraqi troop withdrawal from Kuwait, while at the same time asking the U.S.-led forces to pull out of Saudi Arabia. And meanwhile, while the U.S. Congress continues its debate today on whether to allow Mr. Bush the power to wage an attack. The House is expected to back the president, while in the Senate the outcome is not as clear. Both of Iowa's senators say they want sanctions to be given more time. John? Very light snow in the Des Moines area right now. Some heavier snow to the north and west of town. 25 degrees the temperature downtown. 26 at the airport. Winds continue out of the north at around 5. 92% relative humidity, and the barometer is rising this morning as the storm system slowly moves away. As far as our radar is concerned right now, we do see a band of snow extending from the Ames area back through Boone into the southern part of the county. Also some snow now developing just to the west of Des Moines and also to the south. Just uh, it appears to be west of the Osceola area. That's going to be moving on to the north at about 15 miles an hour. So still a chance of picking up some more light snow in Des Moines this morning maybe to the tune of an inch or two total accumulation. Let's move now to temperatures. We're looking mainly at mid-20s across the eastern part of the state, some low 20s, and even a 19-degree reading in Sioux City, 20 in Council Bluffs right now, and 25 in Lamoni. Our cloud ceiling at the airport is 4,500 feet, and the visibility reduced to around a mile and a half. Let's check the forecast now for Des Moines and central Iowa. Weather advisory this morning. Snow will be ending by around midday, another inch or perhaps two inches accumulation possible, a high in the middle 20s today, which is where we're at right now. Later on tonight, cloudy skies, a low temperature of 15 degrees, north winds continuing at around 10 miles per hour, and tomorrow, an area of high pressure will build into the Midwest, giving us a high around 30 degrees, but it looks like the clouds will be sticking around with us. A little warmer, too. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. All right, that's our report for this morning. Coming up at noon, an effort to help cancer patients look good and feel better. And a reminder to drive carefully today. Road's still a bit slick out there. We'll see you back again Monday. Bye-bye.